I'm going to string this racket with an around the world pattern. And the first thing I did is I went to the Clipper Mate website and found out that this racket should be strung two piece and it uses 20 feet of string for the mains and 19 feet of string for the crosses. That's 39 feet. I've measured out uh, 37 feet polyester string here and I'm going to use this polyester string to string this racket with a one piece. If I was stringing it two piece I'd have to have a length of string to tie off the outside main on both the left hand side and the right hand side. And then when I, after I tie it off, I'm going to cut that string off and throw it away. So I'm wasting a foot on each side. And if I string it with one piece of string, I'll only be wasting the string on one side. When I start the crosses now, I, I have to still have enough string up here on the top cross to reach my tensioner and on the bottom cross to reach my tensioner. So again, I'm wasting another foot up there. So I think 37 feet of, fat of string will be plenty of string to string this tennis racket. One of the first problems now that you're going to run into if you're first starting out is if I'm not going to string all the mains on one side, how much string do I need to actually uh, string the tennis racket? That's going to depend upon how much tension you're putting on the string and how stiff the string is. I've got a polyester string here and I'm going to find out just how much I need. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run in the short side. Okay, what I've done now is I've ran in uh, seven mains on the short side and I've ran in one main on the long side of the tennis racket. I've got enough string here on the short side to go around my gripper and actually grip that string so that I can start tensioning it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp the two center mains in the center of the racket. From this point now I just put this starting clamp on there to hold the string. I didn't put any tension on it or anything. Now what I'm going to do now is back out some of these mains on the short side so that I can create a loop here long enough to reach the tensioner Alright, that gives me a long enough loop to reach the tensioner over here on the short side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run in all the mains on the long side of the tennis racket. And I'm going to leave myself a loop at the top here, uh, excuse me, down here at the bottom so that I can tension the first mains on the long side. Now let me give you a recap of what I've done so far. The first thing I did is I started out with 37 feet of string because I think that'll be more than enough to string the tennis racket. I measured out the short side and made sure that I had enough string to reach the tensioner on that short side and then I docked my string out and clamped the two center mains in the center of the racket. Then I strung all the mains on the long side of the tennis racket on the left hand side. The reason I actually did that is I wanted the short side to be on the right side of the racket because this particular racket has 16 mains and 19 crosses. Anytime I have an odd number of crosses, I start my short side on the right side of the racket. Anytime I have an even number of crosses, I start my short side on the left hand side of the racket. Whether I start on the left or right doesn't make any difference. I still want to find out how much string I need on that short side to reach the tensioner. Once I've done that, as long as I've got enough string to string the tennis racket, 
I should have enough string total. And 37 feet of string is enough string total. When you start stringing the racket now, there's a couple of things I want to point out. This right here is the drop weight. And dependent upon how far out this drop weight is, is how you determine how much tension you want on your tennis string. I'm going to string the mains at 46 pounds and I've already got this set for 46 pounds. But this weight right here only weighs about maybe 5 pounds. So there has to be something that gives this weight an advantage so that 5 pound weight can create 46 pounds of tension. Well. The reason being is because when I wrap the string around this drum tensioner here, the length of the weight or the length from the from the pivot on these this axis is nine times greater for this weight than it is for the string going around this small one. So therefore, I'm going to have a big leverage advantage on this weight. So I don't want to let this weight bounce up and down like this. When it bounces up and down like that, it's creating a lot more than 46 pounds of tension. So anytime I drop the weight, I want to do it slowly and under control. Okay? I always want to make sure that the weight is level. If the weight is up here or down here, I will have less than the tension that's on, set on this uh, drop weight arm. So I'm going to go on and start tensioning the center mains and the first one I'm going to tension is going to be the second main on the short side of the racket. Alright, that looks about level. I'm going to take my other clamp and clamp this string, or those two strings, the first and the second string on the short side of the racket with my clamp. Now I'm going to clamp one more string on the short side. Right, you see how this weight dropped down? I don't want it to do that, so I'm going to level it back up and then clamp my string. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the long side. I've got three strings tensioned on the short side. I'm moving over to the long side. Alright, that's my fifth string on the long side of the tennis racket. Now I'm going to move back over to the short side of the tennis racket. Alright, now that I've got five strings tensioned on each side of the tennis racket, I'm going to string the bottom cross with my long side string. What I want to do now is I want the anchor string that I'm going to tie off on this side, and I'll always tie off on this side because of the way that I start my crosses. But I want that anchor string on top so if my anchor string over here is on top, the same grommet will be on the bottom on this side. So I'm going to go under the tie off, excuse me, over the tie off on this side. Then I'll just run in this bottom cross. And I'm going to use the long side to run in the outside main on the short side.
and I'm going to run one more main on both sides of the tennis racket. Okay, now that I've got six mains ran in, I'm going to run in the top two crosses on the top of the racket. If I've got an odd number of uh, strings in my tennis racket, this one will be the bottom string or the 19th cross. This one up here will be the top string or the first cross. Since they're both odd, they'll both be ran in the same. So the, if I went under a string right here, I'll go under the same string right here. So when I run in the cross, just make sure it's the same as that bottom cross. If I had an even number of crosses, it would be just the opposite. Now I'm also going to run in the second cross. Alright, now that I've got those crosses ran in, let me tell you one thing or why I did it this way. I waited till I had five mains ran in, and that left the clamps up here. Then I had room to weave this bottom cross across. I ran in one more main on each side, which put my clamps at the bottom. So now I can run in these two crosses up here, and the clamps aren't in my way. Now I can finish up the short side and tie off. When I went in the short side now, right here, before I had about maybe a half of an inch of space after that tensioner, so now that string is stretched out maybe about four inches. So I've got plenty of string, so now I know that's enough for the short side. Okay. We'll clamp this string off, and then I'm going to tie it off up here on uh, the tie-off hole. What I'm doing right now is I'm looping the string around behind the grommet. Okay, that gives me or takes up all the slack on the outside of this tennis racket string so that now I can tie my knot and the only slack I'm going to have is between the grommet and the knot and they're going to be touching each other. Then I can take my clamp off and I'm good to go with the other strings. Alright, now I'm going to switch over to the long side again. Tension the last two mains. Then I'll tension the bottom cross. Now 
One thing about